Once again, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, session. Because of time constraint, I'll quickly uh, give you some of the important concepts. The topic which will be delivered now is uh, different than what you have been hearing uh, yesterday and today. It's like metamatrix composite, and uh, as a part of metamatrix composite, there are various advanced manufacturing processes which has been utilized. What are those processes which has been utilized? That we cover, and it's totally different way of creating. Uh, surface composites and surface composites they are matter matrix based. So to make you uh, understand about the content of this presentation, we would be understanding the fundamentals of uh, welding, wherein uh, friction welding, friction stir welding, friction stir processing, variants, and how exactly we are fabricating the various surface composites at the university. Uh, that would be covered. And to give you some of the glimpse of uh, research facility available at uh, PDU. To start with, I think many of you are familiar with the term called metal joining processes. When you say metal joining, welding, soldering, and brazing, these are the three terms which are inbuilt. And these processes are classified based on the temperature at which you join the metal. Say, for example, in the fusion welding, you melt the metal and you join them. While in the solid state welding processes, you are not melting the metal. Without melting, you join them. Right? So when you melt the metal, there are certain challenges you have. What are those challenges? Because metal, you would be melting, and because of melting, porosities, hot cracking, solidification cracking, these are the inbuilt problems which you have in the fusion based processes. But when you switch over to solid state welding process where you are not melting the metal, those problems, is, those problems you can easily overcome because no melting. And the most important benefit you have is the joining of dissimilar metals. Like, say, for example, for many applications, you want to join aluminum to copper, steel to uh, copper. Those combinations are easily welded with the solid state welding processes compared to fusion welding. So, to give you the glimpse, the first, so we are not going into the fusion based welding processes, we are going into the solid state welding processes. One of the solid state welding process, which has been termed as a friction welding. You see that there is lathe machine kind of situation wherein you rotate one component and you bring them into contact with each other, and because of friction, the heat will be developed and you can able to join them. So this is what is happening and solid state condition. You want melt the metal, but without melting, you join them. So this is called friction welding. And from this process only, the new process which has been developed, which is called friction stir welding. So the earlier one is a friction welding. This is called friction stir welding. Now, how this process is different compared to the earlier process? Here, you have a special tool like this. You see in the diagram, there is a special tool. That tool will be there, that tool will be rotated at certain RPM and it will be inserted between the two plates. Maybe similar metals, maybe dissimilar metals. And then once it has been inserted, you see that this is pin, this is shoulder. So first the pin is inserted, you can see there is a threaded junction. And then the shoulder makes the contact with the top surface. And then you apply the field, you see that this type of joint will be created. Such solid state welding processes are extremely useful even uh, for space application also. So here you can see the kind of a setup where you can see the tool and you can see the aluminum plates which has been supported by packing. So this process is called friction stir welding. Now why I am talking about all welding processes? Because I wanted to give you the understanding about the friction stir processing. Now processing and friction stir welding, how they are different? In welding you join the metals while in processing you just refine the microstructure at a localized place. So instead of joining the two metals, you have a same tool, same material, but instead of joining, you run the tool, the, there is a great refinement in the microstructure and the properties. That is the reason it is called friction stir processing. Now, through the processing route, you have the multiple possibilities you have that you can do processing, plain processing also you can do, you can do with the multiple variants also. So in friction stir processing, there are many applications you have. One of the application of friction stir processing is surface composite, right? And that is mainly in the metal matrix. So we are not going into the detail of all different applications which has been mentioned here. We are going into the detail of only the surface composite part. So please try to understand that why surface composites, right? Surface composite because when you make a complete metal matrix composite through the stir casting method, it has been realized there is a great loss of ductility and toughness. To overcome that challenge, they go with the surface composite wherein you have a matrix, wherein you have a surface which is of metal matrix, while the remaining code will remain as it is. So these are the, some of the parameters which you need to uh, control. So why surface composite as I mentioned? 
that is the reason that to have a sandwich property, your surface will remain uh, with the very good wear properties while the, you have a ductile and tough core will be there. So you may have a question that why only the solid state processing? Because when you go with the conventional uh, methods, like existing methods like plasma processing, laser-based processing, electron beam processing, what will happen? There is a reaction between the reinforcement and the matrix. And because of these reactions, because they, they are all fusion-based, because you are melting the matrix, you are melting the reinforcement, right? Which leads to some interfacial reaction between the reinforcement and the matrix. And that is the reason this solid-state route uh, to manufacture the composite it has become more popular with the friction, uh, friction strip processing. Now, just to give you some idea about the different reinforcement which has been utilized. You see here, the boron carbide, silicon carbide, and aluminum oxide, titanium carbide. These are the different reinforcement elements which has been added into the matrix. Now, here, since we are talking about metal, metal matrix, metal matrix means either aluminum, either copper, or magnesium. These are the mainly preferred metric matrix. And you see the boron carbide is being very light, right? You see the density is 2.5, while you see the other uh, reinforcement, the density is also very high. Now, since it is density which is very close to the density of aluminum, you see why boron carbide is more popular in reinforcing with the aluminum and magnesium is because its density is very close to the aluminum density. And that is the reason. So when you mix, say, reinforcement with the matrix, you are ensuring that they have a similar density and you try to mix them more uniformly into the matrix. If you go with the silicon carbide or aluminum oxide, the density difference is very large and you may get the chances of agglomeration while processing. Now you may have a question that how do you add those reinforcement in the material? So there are various techniques. Techniques include, say for example, you see here either you can create a blind holes onto the surface, right? These holes are filled with the reinforcement Say for example, any of the reinforcements you would like, say in this case, say boron carbide. Either you can create a slot also. See one method which is called hole method, another method which is called groove method. You can take any of this method and through method you try to introduce this reinforcement. Once this reinforcement has been added into the material, right? You so there are various methods. First, let us look at those methods. So groove method is there. You can see here there is a groove which has been done. You see here there is a hole which has been done. Right? Different methods, they have a different advantages. There is another method which is called sandwich method. You see that between the two aluminum plates or a magnesium plate, you already have a reinforcement element and you try to mix that with the matrix. Or the fourth method wherein you have a surface coating, you straight away apply the reinforcement directly onto the surface. So in general, there are four methods to create the surface composites. Please understand, this is surface composite, this is not a metal matrix composite, it is surface. You are creating a composite only at the surface. And to introduce that reinforcement, you have a four methods. Either you can go with the hole, either you can go with the glue, either you can go with the sandwich method, or either you can apply the reinforcement directly. So, I'll explain you. Now, there are three case studies I will present in front of you. The first case study wherein we are developing a surface composite to friction strip processing group, how exactly it has been introduced. You try to understand through a simple animation. Say for example, you have an aluminum plate, you create certain blind holes. These holes are filled with the reinforcement. Now you see the red color is there. That indicates that the reinforcement has been already been added. Then you try to process that region. With the tool, you see that the tool doesn't have pin. It is a flat tool you have. So with that tool, you try to close the channels. Say for example, all this reinforcement which has been added, which has been closed with the tool. You see there is a tool, but it is a flat tool, there is no pin here. Now the same area, you process with the tool which has a pin. Hope you are getting a terminology called tool, wherein you have a shoulder and the pin. This is shoulder, this is pin, right? Now the same area you process with the tool which has a pin, then what will happen? That material is going to stir and mix into the matrix. So the first you try to close the channel with the capping tool wherein you don't have pin while the second time the same area you process with the tool which has a pin so that the particles get distributed and mix into the matrix. So you see here this is how you create a pa pattern here. They are, they are all blind holes which has been uh, filled with the reinforcement and you see the when then you apply a capping pass and stirring pass you see these are the just the actual photograph the boron carbide which has been introduced into the matrix of aluminum, you see after the capping pass and after the stirring pass. 
So uh, you may have a question, what, what will happen if I apply directly the capping pass? Say for example, after this situation, if you apply this pass directly, then the powder will come out. So you need to first close the channel. You need to close the channel with the tool which has a, which doesn't have a pen. So you close the channel with the tool and then you try to stir and mix the powder with the help of stirring tool which has a pen. So that is the importance of capping pass and stirring pass. And see, number of stirring passes may be more. If you apply one stirring pass, because this reinforcement has to be distributed more uniformly into the matrix to get a uniform properties. You will get uniform properties only when you have a more number of stirring passes. So the first case study, when you see here, these are all plates, these are all aluminum 6061, which has been processed without the reinforcement. You see the photographs here. Then in one another, to compare the property, it is we have selected the slot method and we have applied boron carbide here and one capping, one stirring. And so we have keep on increasing the number of stirring passes. Stirring passes one, stirring passes two, stirring passes three. And in C, you can see that four, fifth and six, we have changed the direction so that we can ensure the distribution of powder into the matrix well. You see, especially in case of, you compare one and four, if you compare 1 and 4, you realize that the direction of capping and stirring, they are reverse. You compare say 2 and 5, you realize that after each pass, we are changing the direction at 180 degree. Right? So that ensures a uniform distribution of reinforcement into the matrix. This is with the slot method. Similar experiments were done with the whole method also. And then we compared the property. So results are in front of you. You see here, uh, just to compare the base metal, which is with the blue color, which you can see. The beer, which has been mentioned in terms of the beer volume, which is close to 5.4. And when you see the FSP, when yellow ones means what? That there is no reinforcement inside. It is without the reinforcement, but it is just plain processing. You see that it is highest one is 3.7. But when you add into the slot method, when you add into the whole method, you see there is a drastic reduction in the beer, right? So the best one is observed with the F, which is like three passes with change in direction and we so when you compare with the parent metal which was 5.4 and when it is plain process that also has reduced and then when you compare with any whole method and slot method you can see you have reduced from 5.4 to 0.68 that is a drastic reduction in the wheel and just to give you an idea that when you look at at the microstructure level you are realizing that those reinforcement particles so you have a matrix of aluminum in the matrix you can see that, that white one, they are nothing but they are all boron carbide particles, which is distributed into the matrix of aluminum. You see the scanning electron microscopy picture, which shows that all uh, black particles, they are nothing but they are all boron carbide distributed into the matrix of aluminum. So that is how. So you started with certain particle size. So when you are doing stirring passes and capping passes, these particles are also fragmented and they become much finer also and they distributed uniformly. Because since you are applying more number of passes, they distribute it more uniformly and you will get better uh, surface component. So what is the contribution that we found that there is an 87% reduction in the wheel, right, compared to the parent material. And when you compare with the with FSP without any addition, it is 56% decrease in the wheel. And we found that instead of applying the two passes, if you apply two passes with change in direction, you apply one pass like this, you apply second pass like this. So that means the powder get uh, uniformly mixed into the matrix and you can avoid agglomeration and it's become better composites. So some of the work which has already been published by the student and some of the good reputed journals in which uh, beer of material, elsewhere journal it has been published. So there is another case study which is called hybrid surface composite. Now the earlier one was a mono composite. Now here you can see the hybrid. Hybrid means what? Instead of adding one particular reinforcement, you are adding two reinforcement. Right? Say, so for example, we have been hearing about boron carbide. Now, along with the boron carbide, you add molybdenum disulfide. So, we added B4C and MOS2. Now, MOS2 is acting as a dye-wall dye lubricant. So, it will help you to improve the lubrication property. So, we played with the B4C and MOS2, mono and hybrid, and we compared the mechanical and metallurgical properties, especially the weird properties. So why MOS2? Because MOS2 is being utilized by the industry as a dye wall lubricant. So we found that when you have a MOS2 present, uh, that there is a drastic reduction in the wear behavior. 
So we compared, we conducted the instruments with the B4C and MOS2 combination, wherein we vary like this: 100% B4C to 100% MOS2. MOS2 being a dipole lubricant, you see that the finish is different. Now you see this is the first, second, and third fourth. You see here. The moment you cross 50% MOS2, because MOS2 is a lubricant, when the lubricant content increases, friction is not there. Since friction is not there, it is very difficult to do processing. So you see that this is the this is up to 50. Then when you go beyond 50, 75 or 100, say 75 and 100% of MOS2, it is very difficult to process because it gives you lubrication property. So it is going against the principle of friction processing. That is the reason. And then we process the mechanical and metallurgical property. And here, I would like to show you one of the most significant outcome here, which you can see here from this, that we found that, uh, especially the 12.5% MOS2. If you see here, this particular significant result, you see, when you have a 100% before C, you see the average uh, wear. Wear is being highlighted with the blue color. You see wear is in this form. Right? But the moment you increase the MOS to like 12.5%, there is a drastic reduction in the wheel. Right? And it has been reduced like anything. So this particular piece of work was also published in Journal of ASME. And uh, candidate also received his uh, PhD. So these are some of the photographs of one of surfaces. And we also compared the coefficient of friction uh, under the various percentage of MOS to as well. So this is a second case study wherein uh, friction stir processing was used to create a hybrid surface composite and uh, the best combination was 12.5% MOS2. So these are some of the contributions. And the last case study, which is uh, another method which is called friction surfacing. Now just to give you an idea, now friction processing is over. Now the third method which is called friction surfacing. Before I start, I would like to show you a small clip here. If you see the clip here, this is like a surfacing method. Instead of a consumable, and this, this is now a consumable rod you have. The earlier one was a tool which was non-consumable. So here, along with the rod, say for example aluminum rod or a copper rod, you try to deposit reinforcement along with the rod only and you can create a metal matrix layer. So you realize here that you can create, along with this deposition, you have a reinforcement which is also getting deposited simultaneously. So this is called friction surfacing method and this friction surfacing method was extensively utilized for creating certain surface composites also. So in our lab we have created and we created like single layer, double layer, triple layer and we found that you see the uh, phenol disc wear test result, you realize that with the reinforcement in the aluminum rod, the wear is very less, right? So because of that reinforcement effect, you see that microstructural uh, category you can see here, those reinforcement like Black dots are nothing but they are all boron carbide particles. So these are the different case studies which has been undertaken at university to develop metal matrix composite, but in a surface composite mode. And just to give you the glimpse of the building research facilities that we have, we have uh, advanced three axis automatic vertical milling machines created under this one program. These are some of the pictures. We have another facility created in the Department of Atomic Energy project. This is also part of that. We have a hot wire GTW system. We have welding of metals and plastics using ultrasonic systems. In terms of characterization, we have a pin on disc wear testing facility for dry condition, wet condition, pin heating, and furnace heating. This is also there. We have a high temperature tensile testing facility to understand the superplastic behavior. So, this is, these are some of the references which has been utilized. And uh, thanks to the all MTech and PhD scholars. They were part of this, and thanks to the university and to the all funding agency. Uh, thank you, Ramana. So we can take questions. Uh, yeah. Any specific question on uh, surface composite to friction soil processing? interesting uh, lecture and uh, maybe for me it is a totally new subject and not uh, seen. But few queries which come to mind is, uh, uh, as we know, uh, aluminium special grades are only available. So uh, in that case, that is 
not hindering or it is specific to weldable aluminum or for all? Uh, all aluminum, sir. Because here uh, the, we are not doing welding. Mm. We are creating like channels. So you take aluminum plate, you create hole pattern or a slot pattern and try to fill that cavity with the reinforcement and then you try to distribute or mix that within the matrix. Right? And that too, the difference is that this is a solid state group. Normally, there are standard methods to create metal matrix, there is star casting. So in star casting, what will happen? You take a molten, you have a molten metal, in the molten metal, you add the reinforcement. So you will get complete metal matrix. That way in a fusion state. Homogeneous. So in that case, uh, have you tried a study uh, like uh, joining method? Normally you join. Uh, um, uh, mo mostly it is aluminium steel is uh, with the fastening or maybe glue method. Uh, so here have you tried your methodology there and what are the comparison? Yes. Like so if I compare in the lab shear, uh, peel strength. Yeah. So those uh, may be interesting in study. Yeah, so like the process which I was discussing is uh, the mother process is friction stir welding, uh, which is like uh, here I can show you a small uh, photograph to recollect. Yeah, this is the mother process which is called friction stir welding. So you require a tool. There is a tool here. That tool will be inserted between the two plate. Now, when the tool is, you can have a similar material also, you can have a dissimilar material also. You can join aluminum to steel also, you can join aluminum to copper also. But the benefit of this process is that we are not melting the matter. Because the maximum temperature that will be generated is 80% of the melting part of that matter. So what I'm doing, this is very interesting, but now to apply it to the uh, yeah. industry and uh, right. uh, probably it becomes a very patented special process. Uh, in, uh, replacing joints, even for example, uh, if rivets uh, in metal uh, structure, can it replace ri rivets? Yes, yes. So there is a variant of this process which is called friction stir spot welding. Mm. So same tool, instead of applying the field motion, you just uh, rotate it, plunge it and then remove it. So Something like blind rivets. Yes. Okay. So this process is already been patented and it is already been utilized by Boeing for the riveted joints in the aerospace application. Okay, good. Uh, so now coming to the next, is it possible, for example, uh, I, I will tell you one, uh, this is a ballistic application, mm -hmm. where uh, we have a ceramic uh, plate, which is the first hit for the bullet, and uh, we have behind that HPP, high performance polyethylene, which is by nature inert, it doesn't bond. Uh, is there any process of any of this can be applied there uh, to give a good bond uh, and uh, maybe instead of ceramic anything else is there but uh, uh, it should blunt the bullet uh, as a first hit. Uh, so that is one interesting application uh, which has a potential uh, as of now. So the joining between ceramic and? Uh... And, uh, and uh, non-metal and the HPP for performance polyethylene, high performance polyethylene. So, so, we did a very recent study joining between metal and plastics. So, not ceramic, but aluminum to plastic through this method. Uh, what kind of plastic? Uh, PP, SDP, P, 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 okay. High density polymer. If it is a, a polyethylene uh, group, right. uh, then it may be interesting. Uh, yeah. So, so that may be very interesting. Yeah. And instead of, uh, for example, ceramic, if it is little difficult to handle, uh, titanium also is a candidate material. Okay. So, because titanium toughness is higher, uh, so uh, so these are all very interesting uh, application. If you take industry, will take it immediately, because ceramic, ballistic grade, both silicon based or boron based, they are important. And uh, they become brittle when the uh, bullet hits because of nature. Maybe more of that we can discuss. Sure. Thank you. Sir, can we do something with the copper also? Yes, yes, it is possible. We can do the same uh, technique uh, even for the copper. You can create the, like say, pattern like this. And you can fill those cavities even in the copper. But it is slightly more challenging with aluminum strength and copper strength melting points there. Yeah, so uh, 
with this uh, surface, uh, like it is one kind of surface treatment of the metal. So that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, like, what what thickness you can maintain during the process or after the process? Yeah. So it depends on the length of the pin. Say, for example, the plate is six millimeter, and the depth of the hole which has been created is depend on the length of the pin. Say, the length of the pin is say here you can see in the photograph. You can see the length of the pin is three millimeter, right? So the hole which has been created here is close to 2.5, 2.8, and that cavity is filled with the powder. So to answer your question, see the plate is six millimeter. You can have a surface composite on three millimeter from the top. So always it is required to be prepared the like cavity or yes. only simple surface that we can do the uh, this kind of the yeah. So as I mentioned, there are four methods you have. One is hole method. Second one is the sort method, which is most easiest one. Third one is the sandwich method. You can see here in the photograph. And the fourth one, you can directly put the reinforcement and then process it. So in the, what is the difference between these two methods? Like say here, you know, here you have a capping pass. Capping pass means what? You don't have pain. While in the next two methods, you see here, you can apply directly the stunning pass. Are you getting? The purpose of capping pass is to close the channel. If you don't close the channel and then you put apply your stirring tool, the powder will come. And powder is not being put into the dry condition, it is mixed with the acetone. It is mixed with acetone or methanol and then you put into the cavity. Because dry powder again is difficult to apply. So you take the powder, mix it with the acetone and then fill the cavity. Okay, and uh, like any experiment like based upon the high entry paralysis and coating of the uh, like material from this high entropy alloys? High entropy alloys, so far we have not started, but uh, we are into mainly into non ferrous materials like aluminum, magnesium, copper. These three materials we have explored so far uh, for manufacturing the composites, and especially the hybrid composites also. As I mentioned, like 12.5% uh, MOS2 is giving you excellent reduction in the wear. Uh, just to give you one more idea. Here you see in the chart, now you see here, if you put 100% before, see you see your wear is here, you are here, right? But if the moment you add 12.5% MOS2, right, whether it is a slot method or a hole method, right, there is a drastic, because it gives you duplication effect, 12%. So if instead of having complete 100% reinforcement, if you have some percentage of duplication, it helps you to reduce the wear. You see that 100% before, see you are here, but with this, if you further increase MOS2, MOS2, you see, it is going away now. So that's how that's the name is being given hybrid uh, surface now. Thank you. Whatever you have done is 6061. Hmm. In the correct temper, pressure 606. See that. This is my sense. So you are right, sir, because whatever the effect we are getting in the wheel is the cumulative effect of the, because when you run, run your tool, the matrix is also refined. You have a reinforcement, reinforcement is also getting fragmented. And the precipitates which by default the material has, because if you have precipitation hardening with aluminum alloy, you have Mg2SA precipitates, you have a boron carbide, you have a refined matrix, all, to, all three together give, gives you the real properties. Any other question? Fine. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I, I would like to request Sharma, sir. Sir, if you can come. <laughs> sir. Sir, please. <laughs>
insights in this lecture promising to be enlightening and inspiring without further ado let us give a warm welcome to badika sir as he delivers his talk on the same topic thank you